And I remember seeing her fist pump. Like, I got one, yes! Growing up, coming out of karting, and being a young, strong-headed, 16, 17-year-old, you think you're invincible, you think you're a better driver than you are, and you tend to push the limits, I think, in a car when you ultimately shouldn't. So I got very good at getting pulled over and then naturally very good at getting out of it because I had to. I had to find a way to talk. Um, I think I got my first ticket, no surprise to anyone, within two weeks of getting my license. And that was, that was fun. As time went on, there was one year, I think I got pulled over 19 times. Um, for various reasons, not all of them just speeding, not all of them, you know, driving or demeanor issues, but sort of, uh, again, driving dealer cars, having dealer plates on them that they didn't think were visible or that weren't in business hours or uh, illegally parked was quite common, which they, they would see the car and then it would pull out and they'd see the ticket still on the windshield because I'd just leave it there and pull me over for that. And so some of them weren't that bad, but some of them were. And you get really good at, at talking your way out and, and looking for loopholes. I got pulled over once doing you know, 130 and 110 kilometers, again, mind you, um, which isn't too, too bad. Typically, the 11% rule applies to machine malfunction and uh, variables, so you can get away with sort of 122, but 130, they'll tend to pull you in. He said, it's your lucky day. And I said, oh, great. Well, what do you mean? And he said, well, you know, my radar's off by this much and I can't issue a ticket. Uh, da, da, da. So I've had a few luck as well, but eventually you do learn sort of when to pick up on a cop and, and their attitude. And I, I have it for some reason, I'm always getting pulled over on my birthday. And I'd always have the sympathy, like, listen, like, I'm pretty sure they're throwing us a pop prize party for me. Like, I'm going to be late. I don't really, I'm not supposed to know about it. I know I shouldn't be driving like this, but you know, I had to work on my birthday. They're waiting for me. I just don't want to disappoint other people. And, and you know, they give you the sympathy and say, oh, well, it's your birthday. Have a good one. I can get out of here. And I, I, for some reason, like three years in a row, I got pulled over on my birthday and, and I got out of, out of it twice. So, um, but my favorite, my all time favorite was I was coming home from, from work. Uh, it was a Saturday. So I was working uh, in the office of a, a sporting goods store at the time. And I was the only one working in the office that day. And I was driving home, I came off the bridge in Halifax and looped onto Barrington Street, which is a long road, but long sort of, it almost seems like an arterial road, it's four, four lanes wide, but it's, it's uh, it, on the peninsula, so it's technically urban and city and has a rather boring speed limit on a Saturday, which I took to my own to take advantage of. And I got pulled over. He came up to me and he was screaming and yelling because I was doing a good click over, not just a little. And I said, listen, if I get this ticket, I'm going to lose my job. And if I lose my job, I can't afford to subsidize to keep my sister in private school. And she's a scholarship worthy student and I don't really want to ruin that for her. Well, imagine the predicament that this poor officer is suddenly in. And I remember seeing as well when I came by, it was a laser that got me and it was a female officer. And I, she looked young, like probably my age at the time. And I was 24, maybe, maybe younger. And I remember seeing her fist pump. Like I got one, yes. And like, this is like the poor girl's first ticket which naturally she's going to want to give me. And she didn't come to the window though, because what they do is one lasers, one drives, right? So the other officer came to the window. Luckily it wasn't her, because I don't think she would have cared. She would have just, yes, got him. Suddenly this guy's, you know, am I going to ruin some poor girl's university future if I give this guy a ticket? And none of this was true. None of it was true at all, obviously. Um, but I had to come up with something and he didn't have proof otherwise. And how would he prove that? Right? He's going to call my mom and say, hey, can you tell me about your, <laughs> your daughter's school career right now? And sure enough, he, he sat in the car and I think he sat in the car not only to check my driving abstract, which is quite, you know, if it was a coloring book, it would be colored in paint and lots of different paints. Um, it's a thick one, but it's, he, he sat there in a predicament for so long. And I think part of it was just deciding his conscience on what he was going to do. And he came up and he said, I don't let too many people off. He said, in fact, I'm one of the stricter officers. He said, but your poor sister can't suffer for this, basically. And gave me a written warning. He said, have a good day in a bad tone as if to say, like, don't do that again. And I was it. I drove off. So yeah, you get, you get pretty good at getting off tickets if you do it enough. And uh, interestingly enough, I should feel bad for, for that one, but I don't. That one was just too good. It was too good. And I even told my sister and even she wasn't mad. She was like, that's well done.